So welcome to Real Life Church. Glad you're back with us. Glad you're listening wherever you're from. Today, we're going to continue our series called Radical, giving one of those radical messages from the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to start unpacking some really radical ideas of Jesus. He is going to take being a follower to the next level, subjects that all of the listeners would have been familiar with. He is going to flip them upside down and make it a matter of importance. We're going to look at statements on murder and anger and adultery and divorce. Jesus is going to take this familiar and begin to build on it, to add to it what it means to be a follower of Jesus. When we finish up this section, we're going to see that the cost of following Jesus is a high one. That Jesus doesn't have just lofty expectations. Jesus is going to tell us, you want to be my follower? This is what you do. What he's going to talk about is going to be counter-cultural to what we believe today. And I want to challenge you. Listen to the words of Jesus. Let's go ahead and agree with Jesus that whatever he said, I'm going to follow because I am a follower of Jesus. So many people today put stock into the physical, what you do, how you look on the outside. How religious do we look before other people? Jesus didn't put a lot of stock in the outside. He put a whole lot more stock on the inside. He basically said, if I can transform the inside of someone's heart, the outside will follow. A lot of people say, if I can just look the part on the outside, but the inside will be corrupt. And that's what Jesus had a hard time with. And the religious leaders of the day were masters, but it was all on the outside while on the inside. They really struggled, and Jesus pointed that out. And if he was sitting on a hilltop today, and there was a big audience right there, maybe Jesus would be talking to us about what's really on the inside is what counts. So I want to go back and just pick up one verse from the last time we met. It says in chapter 5, verse 20, For I say to you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes, that of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This is where this radical teaching comes in. He's not so concerned about the outside. He's really, really concentrating on the inside of somebody, the heart of the matter. So Jesus begins to do these personal teachings. And the first one is anger and murder. He says, you have heard what the ancients were told. You shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. Every one of the listeners that were listening to this would have said, yep, got it, right, no problem, heard this before. It sounds pretty familiar, kind of like maybe the sixth commandment that God gave Moses, thou shalt not murder. And all of them would have probably known what the penalty was for murder. That's what Jesus is reminding them. You've heard it said, you know what it is. Thou shalt not commit murder. And if you do, you're in big trouble. I don't know if you're familiar with a man named Samuel Little. He has the distinction of confessing to murdering 93 people from 1970 to 2005. The FBI has confirmed his direct involvement in at least 60 of those 93 confessed murders. It makes him the largest confirmed serial killer in the United States. In 2014, he was found guilty and he was sentenced to life in prison where he later died. I imagine that most of us that are listening would say that Samuel Little was guilty of the Sixth Commandment, and he deserved exactly what he got. I imagine none of us that are listening are guilty of the Sixth Commandment, as it was given and understood by the prophets and the teachers of the Old Testament. But Jesus said, your righteousness has to be higher than that of the Pharisees. And then this is where Jesus begins to ratchet it up. I stand before you, and say that I have not violated the sixth commandment as the ancients wrote, but maybe not so much as Jesus wrote. He says, but I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. 
That statement right there would have been one of those shocking statements that Jesus would have made. Everybody's ears would have went, what? Let's see why. First of all, Jesus starts off this statement in contrast. You have to understand that the listeners, they took great stock in what the prophets and what those in the Old Testament had passed. They would have believed what Moses received. Thou shall not commit murder. And then this new guy comes in and he says, but I am now the authority. And here's if you want to call it the rewrite on what it means to be a follower of of mine. There's another word in there. But I say to you, everyone. See, a lot of times in Jewish culture, it was actually okay for a Jewish man to get mad and be angry with a Gentile. But Jesus is now including this statement, and he's using words like everyone. Everyone who is upset with his brother shall be guilty before the court. According to what Jesus might have said, I might have murdered my neighbor. I might have murdered some family members. I might have murdered a coworker or two. I might have murdered a friend. I stand before you today a murderer many times over, probably more so than Samuel Little. That's the words of our Savior, who said that anyone who is angry with their brother is guilty before the court. And this is huge because Jesus is telling us something that's important, that our righteousness needs to far exceed that of the what? Pharisees. You may not have committed the physical act of murder, but on the inside, anger, those words that we use, You've probably murdered one or two and probably have been murdered once or twice over. Did you notice that it says that anyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty? They don't need to go on trial. They don't need to be cross-examined. You're guilty. You are guilty of murder. One of the things that leads to murder a lot of times is anger. And then he goes on to say, he says, And whoever says to his brother, You good for nothing shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. They would have understood that. That would have been the Sanhedrin, probably roughly about 23 different judges sitting in trial of somebody. When you start to slander someone, when you start to talk evil, when you start to talk about someone, you're guilty. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. And whoever says you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. The word fool is probably not the same word that you're thinking of. It's the Greek word moros, and it's actually where we get the word moron from. And it means that we're attacking someone's spirit and condemning them by calling them a reject before God. But when we start saying that about other people, what's wrong with our heart? What would cause a brother to call another brother a reject before God. We're just as guilty as that unspeakable act of ending someone's life. Jesus goes on in verse 23. He says, therefore, if you're presenting your offering at the altar, and there you remember your brother has something against you. You're getting ready to go to the temple. You're getting ready to go to church. And all of a sudden, just like God does, he brings something to your mind. You were angry and Your brother has something against you. You called him some names, and there's an offense out there that your brother has against you. You said the words. You were angry. You did whatever it is that led to sin. And then God reminds you that there's something going on in the heart that needs to be fixed first before you do the outward spiritual act of worship, before you give your offering Go first, what does it say, and be reconciled to your brother. Go make it right. Jesus gives us one more illustration. And then he goes on and says this in verse 25. He says, make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you're with him on the way so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and then judge to the officer and you be thrown in prison. 
Truly, I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. Let's say you are getting sued, and as you're walking your way to court, you run into the person who's suing you. What Jesus was talking about and saying was, try to be reconciled before it goes to the judge. Try to fix this before it goes before the judge who is going to judge you, find you guilty because you are guilty, and then you have to pay the penalty for being guilty. If we sin, and when we do sin against another person, and when we are angry, and when we use words of slander, or when we call people idiots, or whatever it is that we do, get together, make it right between the two of you, and then you won't have to be judged. Because this really does bring up some really interesting language. Do I believe people who murder people in their heart, that they don't inherit the kingdom of God, that somehow they're judged and eternity is taken away from them? No, I don't necessarily believe that. I believe that once we confess our sin, that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Past, present, and even future sins. If we're followers of Jesus and he's given us this radical teaching, why would we let our heart get in that place in the first place? As a follower of Jesus, we ought to work extremely hard not to do that. And if we do do it, go fix the relationship first. This is radical. This is complex. This is hard. You thought it was just don't commit murder. And he's talking about your thought life and what you say out of your mouth. And he says, why as a believer would you ever do that in the very first place? See, I've confessed to you that I'm guilty of murder, and I am grateful for God that he has had mercy on me and he has pardoned me. True disciples repent of their sin. They repent of their acts of murder. They turn to Jesus and they turn to the other person for forgiveness because they are what? Disciples of Jesus Christ. And maybe you're sitting there going, you know what? I don't like what Jesus had to say. And maybe you're sitting there right now and you're thinking, I have murdered that person in my thoughts, or I have murdered them by words that I have said. I have murdered them because I was angry with them. Do what Jesus said. Go and be reconciled while you're still on the way, as the scripture says. Don't let it get to the judge. Take care of it. Take care of it before God. Take care of it before the other person. Radical, right? Jesus is turning up the heat. Want to be a follower? Then we got to do it Jesus' way. Let me pray for you. Father, thanks for our time together. And God, I pray that if this is spoken to someone and that we need to go out and do what Jesus said, that you would give them the courage to go out and do it, to restore that relationship. It was important. It was really important, and it is important today. God, I praise you for your word, even the hard parts, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come back next time, and we're going to be looking at another radical teaching of Jesus where he says, you've heard it said, and I can't wait to open it up for you next time we meet. Until then, God bless you guys.